Phew. and a day at the old fishing hole. Hello there, little fellas. Ready to feed our little fish friends? Yes! Now, where did I put that jar of hooks? Ah, here we go. <sighs> Enjoy. It's the finest dirt in the land. Now for our finned friends. No swimming for an hour after you eat. You don't want to get a cramp. <laughs> you know, it's just swell to have a peaceful place like this where you can just relax and not worry about any distractions or surprises or any crazy thing that'll disrupt the joy of just plain doing nothing. Earth subject not appropriate. Repeat, subject not appropriate. Acquire further information from Earthly life form, then terminate it. <laughs> Say, what's going on? Well, hello there. Hello. Huh? Who are you? I come from the planet Zoltaria, a planet so distant, your Earth scientists have not even discovered its existence. Zoltaria is in the Kruller galaxy over 20 million light years away. Boy, that's far. I wouldn't want to take a taxi there, that's for sure. I bet that'd be expensive. How much do you suppose that'd cost? I can see you are one of your planet's most gifted beings. I wonder if you could help me. It never hurts to help. But how could I possibly help a being from another galaxy? Well, I'm looking for something. You see, I'm on a fact-finding mission from school. If I don't write a good paper and get a good grade, my teacher will melt my brain. Gee, I can see our planet share a similar educational system. I'll be more than glad to help you, Mr. Alien. Come on! First, this is a tree. Trees are wonderful things. We love trees on our planet. They make oxygens, which we breathe. They make homes for little birds and other animals. Some trees are as old and glorious as the beginning of time itself. As an Earth poet once said, I think that I shall never see a poem as lovely as a tree. Tree, right. Tree. That's right, tree. You space folks sure do catch on fast. Tree. Trees are nothing to be afraid of. You see, trees are our friends. I wonder if there's something more to your planet. Something else I should be seeing. Something besides this... nature. Maybe I should show you the big city. Mr. Alien? I used logic. The sign said, don't walk. So I ran. <laughs> I want ice cream! <laughs> I told you no. Now stop whining! I am not whining! <laughs> this repugnant, small earth creature? What is the language she is communicating with? This high-pitched squeal? <laughs> That's not a language. That's just the way some kids behave when they don't get their way. It's called whining. Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Uh, ice cream! Come on, Mr. 
Mr. Alien. It's safe to cross now. <laughs> That's certainly more like it. Affirmative, parental unit. With your permission, may we please hurry home so that I may sanitize dirty dishes, paint the garage, and mow the lawn? This is it, huh? You Earthlings live in trees, or these caves of concrete slabs you call buildings. Oh, no. Some of us live in houses. A home can be anything. You see, a house is made of wood and stone, but a home is made of love alone. I would be curious to see your home, Eek, before I vomit. Mm. Sure, I live in a great home. Come on. This is my family. I live with them. They feed me and they take care of me. And what is this glowing box they worship so? Oh, that's called television. It brings us Earthlings information to help us think and imagine and learn. It's Shorty, the magical dancing piece of glass. Hey, don't sit there. He's on the chair and he'll stick right in your... We interrupt this program to bring you a special report. This is Clive Butburn coming to you live from the Cape Carbuncle Space Center where space exploration history is about to be made. The X-94 Quadro Millennium Super Shuttle. To some, it may look like an ordinary soda bottle, and yet, uh, why? Uh, what's that? It is a soda bottle. Uh, come on now, can someone move that, please? Oh, sorry, I was on my lunch break. The X-94 Super Shuttle is mere hours away from launching two Earthlings around the sun and back again. And dare I say, these are no ordinary Earthlings. Because of the extreme danger of this mission, Cape Carbuncle scientists are sending apes on board for the X-94's perilous maiden voyage to orbit around the sun. These simple creatures will be piloting a $17 billion spacecraft past the unexplored Kruller galaxy to circle the sun, take a number of snapshots, then return to Earth. Whether such tiny brain stupid simians are up to the task at hand still remains to be seen. Boy, those monkey knots sure are brave. Seems like you're not the only one exploring new, huh? <laughs> She's perfect. Yeah, that's my neighbor Annabelle. I think she's pretty special, too. Yoo-hoo! Hello, Link! Hi, Annabelle. Ah! <laughs> Who's your friend? Oh, this is my new pal from outer space. He's from the Crawler Galaxy. His name is, uh, say, little space buddy, what exactly is your name? Well, uh, actually, on my planet, my friends just call me... Zoltar, destroyer of Earth! <laughs> 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 Annabelle! Hi, Zoltar. You think we'll be staying on our planet long? Just long enough to acquire the missing component for our Zoltarian death ray. Well, uh, <laughs> we certainly don't want to hold you up from finding that missing death ray component, uh, Mr. Zoltar. <clears throat> we'll just be moseying along here. I have found my component, and she's coming with me! <laughs> Kumbaya! I just handed my girlfriend over to Sinister Space Beans. Surely someone will hear my cries and help me before the aliens can destroy our beautiful planet. Help! Help! Mr. Mime? <coughs> I thought I'd be stuck in that bubble forever. Boy, mine sure are expressive thespians. I've got to find a way to get to the planet Zoltaria in the Crawler Galaxy, but how? Oomph! The Crawler Galaxy. The monkey knights are going right past the Crawler Galaxy. The alien's planet is in the Crawler Galaxy. I have to get on that rocket.
brave monkey knots are being led to the spaceship to be strapped in to begin this historical journey. Welcome aboard, gentlemen. Would you like a drink before takeoff? I must find a way onto this spacecraft. Light this candle. Give the monkeys their cue. Roger that, Jib. Oh, hey, a banana. What a treat. Great. Retro Radisson tabulators. Check. Do drag. Whooper thrust at two nine or five times mass. Undivided by density and light speed squared. That's what I meant. Wozniak wibble sensors set at 13 or 0, 0, 0, 6. Check. T minus 10 seconds, 9. Blinking light timer there. 8. Check. 7. 6. 5. Parking brake, parking brake! Yay! Stop the launch! Stop the launch! Don't you see? The astrotech projection times mass of the retro regenerative density squared at the speed and vector will cause the heliosparagitic volume of the simian's pilot craniums to flux into completely concave molecular garb! What exactly are you saying, Lou? The monkeys can't land the rocket! Come back. At this speed of re-entry, a common simian's head will shrink, rendering him useless. After circling the sun, those monkeys are going to come rocketing back to Earth at over 800,000 miles an hour with shrunken, useless heads, which will be scattered all over Kansas in little itty-bitty monkey pieces. A finger there, a nose there, a bail up heel there! Uh, Lou, Ixnay on the Ed Day Unky Maze. The monkey's wives are right over there. <laughs> You'll be sorry my boyfriend E gets here. <laughs> the monkeys That's all there is to it. God, history goes. Not a big meat. Ten thousand in the archives there. This is the X-94 to Cape Carbuncle. Come in, Cape Carbuncle. Cape Carbuncle here, fellas. Everything is A-OK. -okay. You boys go ahead and have some lunch. We'll get back to you. Over and out. Well, there is some good news. At least they'll crash into this desolate field far away from civilization. It's in the middle of nowhere. It sure is. That's why they put that nuclear weapons munitions dump out there. We gotta call Eddie. No! It's not that important. Yet. Well, I wonder what this could be. Oh, look, it's some kind of cat food. Please, brave monkey knots, I implore you. Interesting. Talking food. My girlfriend Annabelle has been kidnapped by aliens from the planet Zolteria in the Crawler Galaxy. I know this ship will be passing the Crawler Galaxy. Please, please, do you think you can drop me off there so I may rescue her? I'm sorry, my feline stowaway. We've trained 17 years for this mission. We have lived our lives for this moment and this moment only. My comrade speaks the truth. You see, we're tired of being treated as less than human. The hopes of an entire species rest on our accomplishing this mission. We shall not be swayed. As my colleague has stated, my friend, our course cannot be altered one iota. I'm afraid there is nothing in the entire universe so important that it could redirect our flight to an unscheduled stop at Zoltaria in the Cruller Galaxy. Gee, that's too bad. I heard they had a really neat tire swing there. You're telling me, Lou, that if those monkeys crash into that nuclear munitions dump, it'll blow up the entire continent of North America? There won't be anything left but burnt mud! Then we've got to call Eddie. No, oh, it's not time. Not yet. How fitting that an Earthling cat will be the catalyst for destroying the planet Earth. <laughs> Oh, no, you know, Zoltar, there's 
There's no way you're gonna... Fun! <laughs> I'm afraid your boyfriend is too late. Now hold on just a minute. Guards, seize him! Fifteen seconds to destruction of Earth. Fourteen seconds to Why, destruction. Zoltar? Why would you want to destroy such a great planet as Earth? A planet full of wonderful things. I mean, we've got rivers and fields and children and Dr. Seuss and Woody Allen and Mr. Rogers and Monet, the Muppets, Stevie Ray Vaughan, Shakespeare, Louis Armstrong, the Barbie twins, and... The destruction of Earth is by the order of our Imperial Council. But why, Zoltar? Why? It's quite simple, really. You see, the Earth obstructs our view of Uranus. We realized that only after we built our observatory here. So, my little friend, since we are out of funds to rebuild, we have to destroy your planet. <laughs> Proceed. Swing here. No time for that now, Monkey Nice. We better skedaddle. Two seconds to destruction. One second to destruction. Adios, Earth. Oh, Ike, you've saved the whole world. Yeah, gee, we're so lucky. Nothing can go wrong now. Uh oh, Annabelle, the Monkey Nice heads have shrunk. Hello? Uh. Hello, is anyone there? This is Cape Carbuncle Control. Who is this? Uh, hello, my name's Eek. I'm a cat, and, uh, I seem to be at the controls for now. Uh, can someone help us? We'll get right back to you, uh, Mr. Pussycat. There's a super shuttle rocketing towards Earth at 800,000 miles an hour, and it's being driven by a cat named Squeak. Isn't that cute? Uh... And they're headed right for the munitions dump! <laughs> we gotta call Eddie Lou, we gotta! All right, it's time. Sorry to trouble you, Eddie. We've got a problem out here. We need your help. Oh, thank goodness. Here's the situation. 800,000 miles an hour, the Simeon Paradox manifests itself at the intraflux of anti-concave ratio. Munitions dump full of discarded NATO radioactive post-cold war weaponry. There's a K at the helm. Dinner reservations for nine. Should I cancel them or the world's gonna blow up? Retrospect defrostifying blinking light outer is still active. Ah! <laughs> So, Eddie, what do you think? I think those monkeys are goners. Uh, hello? Hello, Cape Carbuncle, sir? Hi there, um, Mr. Pussycat. Uh, everything is going to be just fine. What are we gonna do? What the heck are we gonna do? Mommy! <laughs> well, it is 12.30, we should get some lunch. Well, let's go. How about Mexican? Oh, yeah, I know a place in the corner. What are we gonna do? I don't know, Annabelle. This is a pretty sticky situation. Sticky? Yeah. Here, Annabelle. Chew this up as fast as you can. Uncle. That's real funny, Biff. <laughs> we made it, Eek! Eek? Eek? Well, at least the beautiful planet of Earth has been spared, and those bad aliens will never do such bad things again, and someone will be here to get me soon. I'm, I'm just sure of it. They wouldn't just allow me to sit up here on the moon in the cold darkness of space for the rest of my life, would they? <laughs>